Active and passive transport are biological processes that move oxygen, water, and nutrients into cells and remove waste products. Active transport is the movement of particles from areas of low concentration to high concentration. Because particles are moving up their concentration gradient, energy, usually in the form of ATP, is required. Passive transport is the movement of particles from areas of high concentration to low concentration, or down the concentration gradient. Passive transport does not require energy. Some examples of active transport are endocytosis, exocytosis, and sodium-potassium pumps. Particles commonly moved by active transport include proteins, ions, large molecules, and complex sugars. Examples of passive transport include diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis. Particles that tend to move through passive transport include small monosaccharides, phospholipid-soluble materials, which are generally small nonpolar molecules, water, oxygen, CO2, and sex hormones. We'll now move to the next part of the study guide, which discusses xylem and phloem. Xylem transports water and minerals from the roots up the stem. Because xylem sap only moves in one direction, it is called unidirectional. Xylem tissue also provides strength to the vascular bundle because it contains the polymer lignin. Phloem transports food and nutrients, for example, sugar and amino acids. Phloem sap moves from source to sink, or from the leaves to areas of growth. Because phloem can move in multiple directions, it is called multidirectional. Xylem and phloem help make up the vascular bundle. They are separated by a cambium I cannot pronounce. Xylem is always on the inside, and phloem is always on the outside. We will now discuss the path of a protein and the organelles it moves through as it is synthesized. Synthesis begins in the nucleus. The primary purpose of the nucleus is to store genetic material, seen here in purple. The genetic material, or DNA, is transcribed by an enzyme to make mRNA, or messenger RNA. The nuclear envelope surrounds the nucleus, and mRNA must pass through this envelope using nuclear pores. The mRNA exits the nuclear pore and heads for the rough endoplasmic reticulum. This endoplasmic reticulum is called rough because it is studded by ribosomes, shown here as orange dots. The ribosome is the site where mRNA is translated into a protein. This protein then moves to the Golgi apparatus. As the protein moves through the lumen of the Golgi, it is modified and packaged for transport. Eventually, a transport vesicle buds off the Golgi, and the protein is ready to go wherever it needs to. Thank you for watching this video. You'll find sources in the description.